Wabash, the gentleman's rule. You gotta believe in that stuff. The Wabash always fight. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Don Morrell Show. Your chance to hear the thoughts and comments of the head football coach of the Little Giant program. And coach, we begin today's show on a little bit of a sad note. We want to send our thoughts and prayers and best wishes to the College of Worcester and in particular head coach Frank Colapreet and the College of Worcester football program. They lost a young man, a three-year senior starter, Clayton Geib. Uh, passed away on Sunday and I know you and coach have had a chance to, to exchange some messages and I know everybody not only the fans of Worcester but everyone with involved in college football uh, certainly understand and are thinking of the family and the extended Worcester football family with that loss. T terrible loss and uh, they're in our thoughts and our prayers. And there will be a moment of silence this Saturday across the North Coast Athletic Conference uh, so fans throughout the NCAC can take a moment to remember Clayton Guy and his accomplishments and his, his outstanding work as a member of the College of Worcester football program. After that moment of silence, it'll be on to work for your football team. You have a homecoming game against Hiram and you're coming off of a very good game against Kenyon College on Saturday, a 62-7 victory. Uh, a game that got off to a little bit of a sluggish start. You started well after the opening kickoff, but a fumble gave it back to Kenyon, but your guys got it right back on a fumbled punt try, and then you just took over on offense. Uh, talk about the start of the game. Uh, again, a little sloppy to start. We, were, uh, uh, we weren't happy with the fumble. We, we don't like turnovers here at Wabash, uh, and that, that was a real bummer. But we pulled it back together, and then uh, I thought played a tremendous first half, uh, consistent. We threw the ball more, which was something uh, we wanted to do. Preston and Murphy played well there, we think. And then again, our run game is going to be tough for people to uh, uh, challenge. It's a strong point of our offensive team. Well, you mentioned Weston Murphy. Let's give you his numbers. 15 of 20 on the day for 201 yards. First touchdown pass of his career. Outstanding job by your receiving core. And it was led by Oliver Page, who caught six passes over 100 yards, 116 yards, and he caught one of the two TD passes. You also had Austin Nightingale come in to spell Weston a couple of times, and he performed extremely well as well. Only tried two passes, and both of them ended up in the end zone. Uh, one of those to Dylan Burrish, uh, and the other to uh, Nate Melke, who uh, took it in from about 25 yards out. So a great performance by both quarterbacks on Saturday. Confident in Nightingale, too. He certainly is a more than an adequate backup. And he does give us a little change up to put him in the game and uh, uh, run the ball and some play action throws. Well, one of the uh, areas you just mentioned, him running the football, he was outstanding. Bobby Bloom led your running attack. He had eight carries for 70 yards, and he scored two of your six rushing touchdowns. So you really were showing more of the run or the uh, passing game on Saturday, but that run game was still just as good as it was that opening week against Albion. You ran the football 53 times for 316 yards yep. and, as, and those six touchdowns. Yep, uh, no, did a great job. Again, up front, they do a super job. Only Olmstead's the offensive line coach here at Wabash. Uh, just gets his guys prepared week in and week out. I think sometimes they get mad when we try to throw the ball. They just want to run it every snap. <laughs> Um, but uh, really, really a fine job by that group. We mentioned Bobby Bloom with the 70 yards. Austin Nightingale was second in carries with six for 65 yards. Tyler Downing, 10 carries for 58 yards on a touchdown. Ike James, nine carries, 54 yards, and two more scores. Austin Hoover had 11 carries. He was the leader in that category. He rushed for 50 yards and one touchdown. And you even got a chance to see some of the guys a little further down the depth chart. Dariq Williams had three carries. Michael Walker had three carries. And then Austin Mur or Weston Murphy, excuse me, with three carries from that quarterback position sure. as well. Uh, we mentioned, we, we, we talked about this a little bit on, on Saturday after the game. You really took the opportunity to look at a lot of guys. How valuable is that for you as a coaching staff to be able to, in a live game situation, and Kenyon, you know, obviously didn't have a, a deep bench being on the road. So you're facing guys that are their regular players and you get a chance to really evaluate and your players get a chance to perform ag against an opponent in a live situation. How valuable is that for you and the players? It's extremely valuable. I think more so for our kids to, to uh, the ones that don't think they're gonna play much to get out and get on the, 
the field at a Division III football game uh, here at Wabash College is a big deal, that they got to play in front of their parents and friends and fraternity brothers, and uh, I think that's the real jewel there. So uh, I enjoy it when we get that opportunity, but then you do get to evaluate the kids against uh, good competition. Well, we mentioned uh, getting a chance to see some of those different players. You had some new faces at the top of the tackle mark defensively. Uh, Jacob Helmer had six. He was a co-leader along with Ryan Walters. And then Ahmad Hill came into the game and, and really performed well. You had a couple of guys who were out due to some injuries, and that gave Ahmad and some other guys a chance to really shine. And they took full advantage of it and played an extremely good game. They did, and it's great, especially on the defensive side of the ball, to see some of the young guys get out there and run around and play, and, and you can tell they have bright futures uh, ahead of them at Wabash College. A guy who's been a little dinged up at the start of the season but really performed well, Artie Akiwa, two fumble recoveries. Yep. He recovered the fumble on the punt attempt and then scooped up another fumble later in the game. You ended up scoring, I believe, 20 points on turnovers. How important is it to make those turnovers become points for the Wabash football team this year? Well, it's interesting, and we talked about it uh, last week. It was very similar to last year where we made a big jump between game one, game two, we created turnovers, and then we scored off of it. And that, I think that's really the personality of our football team. One of the things we talked about last week, and, and you talked about this with the team, you have the, the statement that every football coach makes that your biggest improvement comes between week one and week two. But the challenge you put down to your football team is to not limit how much that growth would be. Mm -hmm. How happy were you with what you saw from the difference between week one and week two? Uh, you, you couldn't give them a B grade. You'd have to give them an A. And that's really, uh, and, it, and I don't think that bye week was a real pleasant week around here. We got after it, and uh, it was a continuation of camp. But we did get better at what we wanted to. Uh, and now we've got eight in a row to play, and we need to be ready to do that. Important as well, last Saturday, you open up the conference with a win, and it's always key to get that, that first step underway, getting that first conference win. Now you roll into this week. You've got a, another home uh, conference game against an explosive Hiram football team. This is a team on offense that can run the football, can pass the football. They have a very dangerous quarterback who has gained a lot of experience in Randy Tucker. Uh, they started him toward the end of the season last year as a sophomore. Uh, he ended up picking up two of their wins, and he's jumped back on the saddle uh, this year and has been nothing short of spectacular. A six touchdown effort throwing and two more rushing touchdowns in the win against Earlham. He was impressive again last week against DePaul in, in their loss to the Tigers. Uh, he's among the national leaders in completion percentage, in total yards. He's the full package. He is. We've got our work cut out. You know, fortunately against Albion, we saw an athletic quarterback. We're going to see that again. I think he's just surrounded with more explosive players. And I know, uh, you know, it's going to be a scary afternoon for us on defense. It really does get us ready for the rest of the schedule. They're just, I don't think there are any easy teams. Uh, on our schedule, so you just got to take it, one, it's very cliche, but one week at a time, uh, Hiram is capable of scoring a bunch of points, and uh, we need to handle that challenge. Well, they've also been very physical on defense. Uh, we saw that last year in the game at Hiram. Um, they come ready to play uh, as soon as they step off the bus, and, and that can provide a challenge for your offense. Uh, Kenyon wasn't quite as physical last week. Albion certainly was a very physical sure. football team, so you've got that to draw upon as yep, well. We do. No, I think, you know, every year we play Hiram, it's a, it's a more physical game than uh, either team expects. Um, I think they respect our football program, we respect theirs, and uh, the two teams go at it year in and year out. We had a, a really good battle last year uh, up in Ohio. It was a, a good battle when Wabash came away with. We played Hiram for homecoming two years ago and picked up the win. Uh, does homecoming add anything special for this football team with all the pageantry that's going to start? We're taping this show on Wednesday afternoon, and tomorrow at 11 o'clock we'll all go out to the mall sure. and we'll, we'll see the chapel sing competition. And there's already high energy around the living units getting ready for chapel sing, getting ready for the float contest, the queen contest, all of those things. Does the football team gain energy and gain excitement from that? Well, it certainly gains distraction. <laughs> uh, 
our freshman guys are wiped out from their involvement in the fraternity uh, activities and getting ready for chapel sing and so you've you, you've got to overcome that and uh, kind of reel your guys in it is a great charge when they come out onto the field and you know obviously we have tremendous crowds and tremendous support and uh, there'll be motorhomes in the parking lot tomorrow night, so uh, uh, we feed off of that energy too. You get ready to play a team like Hiram. We've talked about time of possession the first two weeks. Against an explosive offense like theirs, does that make time of possession even more important? It, it does. I mean, Hiram could just score 35 points uh, pretty quick and pretty easy, so we were going to, uh, like every game, try and hog the ball. Uh, again, get back, get more of a run pass balance, um, keep our defense off the field as much as we can. How important is it to make certain you're not trying to play catch up to their scoring, that you're able to either match them score for score or get a big stop? I mean, does does that become an even bigger key for the defense to be able to make sure that you you either limit them to a field goal opportunity rather than a touchdown if they've got a close opportunity sure. or or to really eliminate a long drive. Of course, last year they were able to score on a couple of five plays drive, drives because they've got that type of explosive offense. They do. You just you don't want to get into a high tempo game with them when they get going, uh, whether it was Earlham or DePaul. They get into a rhythm. You can, they can feel it. They know it. And they they move the ball quickly, they don't huddle, they go super fast. So we don't want to get into a score-a-thon with them. We've talked about the advantage of the six-game home schedule, but how important when you're playing a team like this is playing them at home rather than your team making that long trip to Hiram and then having to come out Saturday morning, Saturday early afternoon and face a team that has that type of explosive offense. Do you gain, you know, you talk about that three and a half point spread sure. advantage when you're home. Does that really play into uh, as a factor in Saturday's game? I think it does. I think the conference has become much more competitive than it was three years ago. And uh, every home team enjoys, depending where you're going, a three to five to even a seven point advantage. So I'd, I'd much rather play them at home than I would uh, up in Hiram and you will get a chance to see them at home. And, and before we talk about that game, I want to offer you some congratulations. Last night, uh, received the Monsignor Boussad, if I pronounced that correctly, Perfect. award from the Archdiocese of in Indianapolis, CYO. It was an annual salute to volunteers and youth and athletic ministry. So congratulations on the receiving of that award. Thank you. Night. I'm very proud to win that honor. And Coach Morell and his Wabash College squad will be out on this very football team Saturday afternoon. A reminder, it is a 2 o'clock start. Uh, we apologize for not having highlights this week, but as you know, we had some broadcast issues last Saturday. The good news, all those broadcast issues are fixed. We'll be back with our full broadcast this Saturday, and it'll begin about 1.40 with this very show that you're watching. And then Jim Amadon, Steve Hoffman, Josh Mundell will take you through all the action beginning at 2 o'clock with the kickoff here Wabash versus Hiram. Ticket information is available on the Wabash College Sports site. You can go to Ticketor, that's T-I-C-K-T-O-R.com slash Wabash to purchase your tickets ahead of time. Remember, tickets are cheaper if you buy them before the day of the game, so make sure you go out and have your homecoming tickets. And make sure you're around all weekend. Outstanding homecoming floats at each of the living units, a wonderful homecoming chapel just prior to the football game. Uh, activities all week long beginning Thursday with Chapel Sing. If you're a Wabash alum, it really behooves you to come back to the campus, support the football team, and support the college at this outstanding event. Coach, I know you'll be here Saturday. Looking forward to it. Thank you. You've been watching the Don Morrell Show, your chance to hear the thoughts and comments of the head football coach of the Wabash College program. We'll talk to you next week. Wabash, the gentleman's rule. You gotta believe in that stuff. Wabash always fight.